Our observable universe is estimated to have been around for more than 13 billion years, composed of almost 2 trillion galaxies, each with their own 100 million stars. In our Milky Way galaxy alone, it is likely that there are some 40 billion Earth-like planets within the habitable zones of their stars. Numbers of this magnitude are extremely hard for the human brain to conceptualize, and at the same time, make it hard to imagine that there is no other form of life out there. Ardipithecus, the earliest known genus of the zoological family hominid, the group that includes humans, lived between 5.8 and 4.4 million years ago. The primate was based in Africa and was the first to walk upright. Bipedalism allowed Ardipithecus to use its hands for weaponry, tool making, and other survival needs. The Australopithecus and Paranthropus genus followed, along with the ability to climb trees and consume a broader diet. Between 1 million and 2.5 million years ago, the Homo genus appeared and began migrating to other continents. To this day, Homo sapiens, which refers to wise man in Latin, the species to which all humans belong, are the only surviving species in the Homo genus. In only 6 million years, a small fraction of the universe's life. Our ancestors were able to progress from hunting and gathering in the fields of sub-Saharan Africa to colonizing nearly an entire planet. In the past century alone, we have developed the ability to perform precise surgery on the human body, created networks of virtually instant global communication, and have the capability to explore distant planets. Who's to say that other life forms haven't done so already? or even progress far beyond what humanity deems possible. However, before we can try looking for them, we have to know what to actually look for. Scientists must assume that civilizations start millions or even billions of years apart from one another and develop at varying speeds and directions. Our human ancestors started with nothing but their brains and physique. Those who were faster, stronger, and smarter survived. Thus, it is reasonable to assume that aliens have similar fundamental characteristics in order to thrive. While being constrained to the same laws of physics, a civilization's level of advancement could be measured based upon energy use and consumption. In the midst of the 20th century space race, Nikolai Kardashev, a Soviet astronomer, did just that. He proposed a logarithmic three-pronged scale that classified a hypothetical civilization's level of progress, known today as the Kardashev scale. Type one civilizations, also known as planetary civilizations, are the lowest level civilizations on the scale, who have the ability to store and use all of the energy that reaches its home planet from its host star. Michio Kaku, a famous theoretical physicist and futurist, states in this book, Physics of the Future, that K-1 civilizations can, quote, harness the power of volcanoes, manipulate the weather, control earthquakes, and build cities on the ocean, end quote. Type 1 civilizations are also classified as having the innate ability to perform both fission and fusion power reactions to supply a population of up to 100 billion people with enough energy. They also have the ability to travel and communicate quickly between planets Necessary resources to, to sustain society would also likely be extracted from nearby asteroids and gas giants. This technology is already being researched and developed by companies like TransAstra and Bradford Space. Type II civilizations, also referred to as stellar civilizations, have control over the total energy output of its host star through hypothetical megastructures like the Dyson Sphere, which was first proposed by Freeman Dyson's paper search for artificial stellar sources of infrared radiation. K2 civilizations are also classified as having the capability of interstellar travel and communication. Theoretical mechanisms for these abilities include the Alcubierre drive, proposed by theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre, by which a spacecraft would contract space in front of itself and expand space behind it to result in faster than light travel. Type three civilizations, also called galactic civilizations, can control the total energy of its entire host galaxy. 
K3 civilizations have the power to travel and communicate between galaxies and even engineer on a galactic scale. Neutron stars and pulsars may help fuel the exponentially high requirements of these societies as outlined by James Latimer of Stony Brook University. Now, you may be asking yourself, where do we land on this scale? As we all know, our society still relies heavily on non-renewable energy sources like coal, oil, and natural gas. We have yet to capture, use, and store all the energy that falls onto our planet from the sun. However, we are making progress with some scientists estimating only 100 years until we become a type one civilization. Carl Sagan, a famous astronomer and astrophysicist, famous for his work in researching the possibilities of extraterrestrial life, proposed an equation to determine a civilization's intermediate Cartesian rate, k equals log 10 p minus six over 10, where p is the collective power a civilization uses in watts. Currently, our civilization consumes around 17.7 terawatts of power, or 177 followed by 11 zeros. Substituting this value into the equation above, our interpolated Kardashian rating is approximately 0.7248. Even as a civilization with over 7.5 billion individuals who have sent humans to the moon and scientific machinery billions of miles into the dark depths of space, our species still scores a measly 0.72. So how can we increase this number? No, we can't just aimlessly consume more energy to artificially inflate this metric. That isn't sustainable. We as a society need to collectively recognize the importance of science and support the researchers and organizations that work so hard to make our lives better. Encouraging companies to rely less on non-renewable resources, although expensive, is an important first step towards preserving our Earth. Given the nature of how technological advancements naturally progress, buying time for future generations to make promising leaps in innovation is of the utmost importance. Investing in our nation's youth and improving their education will only serve our species for the better in the future. Just imagine a world with no scarcity of resources, no hunger or poverty, a future with automation and artificial intelligence so advanced, people no longer need to perform tedious daily tasks. Most importantly, however, a future where each individual has the ability, resources, and time to spend doing the things they love. Thinking, discussing, and sharing topics like these are truly humbling. It shows us that humanity has so much potential and still a long, long way to go. I strongly believe that the compounding effect of the positive actions taken by each individual can progressively lead to real change. Thank you.